Carrie from Dispatches from the Frat House. Okay, project planning. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to preempt that by saying that Clayton is in the living room watching Napoleon Dynamite and I can hear it. So I'm going to try really hard not to giggle while I do this. Okay? Okay, so several of you guys have asked multiple times about doing a project planning video and I could not wrap my head around doing it and I couldn't figure out why I couldn't wrap my head around doing it and that's been driving me crazy for well over six months at this point. Given it a lot of thought, I kept looking at it as I needed to explore every single different way to set up a project and then go through and explain every single different way to set up a project. And that's not how I do my videos really. You know, I show you guys how I do stuff and I tell you, you know, this works for me. This may not work for you. You know, please remember that this is what, how, you know, we're working with this brain. So, hmm, yeah, <laughs> big caveat there. So I'm going to show you guys, um, it'll probably end up being more than one video actually. Um, first, I want to show you just how I have things set up because for me, the biggest thing, the biggest hang up about getting projects done is keeping track of where I am in each project. I mean, essentially the basis of setting up a project is make sure you completely understand what the project is and what it entails and then breaking it down into littler steps that you can kind of chip away at here and there to get the whole thing done. That's that's kind of across the board regardless of what kind of project it is, regardless of you know if it is just for you, if it's involving you and other people, it's still this thing that you break up into little pieces and then chip away at it until it's done. So that's, and I'll take you guys through like a sample video project probably, um, that'll be the second video and show you how I do that. But that essentially to me at least applies to any project. My big issue is always keeping track of where I am in each project so that when I have time, I can very quickly look in one glance on one page and see all the little kind of next steps that I need to take for each project to be able to get it done. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show you first. It doesn't have to be set up like this. This is just what works for me, okay? So I'm going to flip the camera around and I'm gonna show you, you guys saw a little bit of this in the November setup. So if you wanna see the full on planner setup right now, watch the November 2014 setup video and that'll show you what I'm using right now. Um, links for any of the inserts that I'm using, I'll put down below. And uh, so first I'll show you where I'm keeping track of everything and how I'm keeping track of everything, like the next action or the next step I need to take. It's, it's the next little bite-sized piece of each project. I try to kind of hit each one a little bit each week. Okay, so let's do that first. All right, thank you so much, guys. Bye-bye. Okay, so here's how I have the keeping track of where I am in each project set up. Okay, so let me start by showing you as far as the setup in the planner of the projects, this is my main planner, okay? This is my, you know, calendar and whatnot. Um, this book right here is all work projects, okay? So each one of these is a different project. And then within each one, I keep notes about emails that may have been exchanged, anything that... Um, you know, somebody says, oh, I'd, I'd love to, I saw this, I really like it, you know, could we put that on my website? Sure, you know, that kind of thing. That is a new task, right? And that in itself could be another small project and in inside of this big project. So each of these, and I can't show those to you because they've got people's information on them, but <clears throat> this is just regular grid paper um, from that six paper fat pack from Buteo Bunker on Etsy. <coughs> Excuse me, you guys. And all I do on here is I like the grid paper because I can make check boxes. So I leave, um, let's see, I leave some space. Mm, you see that right there? <laughs> I'm trying to do this properly. So this is my current checklist of stuff. Actually, I need to mark that one off um, that I am doing for this client, okay? So I've got this big long list, this one is done. 
And I also keep this list in Evernote, and that is going to be another, this is probably gonna end up to be three videos, you guys. One of them will just be Evernote, and I am starting a whole series on Evernote. But just the projects part of Evernote, my usage at least of Evernote in planning projects and keeping track of things is gonna be probably the third video in this project planning series, okay? Then there'll be a whole other separate Evernote video or series about you know, how I use the reminders and the bills and blah, 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 blah. So. Um, but these are all things that I still need to do for this project. So, and, and it looks the same for the next one. So using this as an example, this is just all the little things that I need to maybe break down into separate tasks, maybe not. Um, and like logo check, somebody did her logo for her. Actually, that's, that's almost done too. Um, a lot of times when something is nearly done, I will fill it in like part way. Let's see if I can wrangle here. So I am waiting to hear back from somebody about that. So I did my part of it and I'm waiting to hear back from somebody about something about that. So I marked it in halfway. So I know that means pretty much my part's done. I'm waiting on somebody else or I've got it halfway done myself if it's something I'm doing all by myself. Okay. So just to me, basically, when I break a project down into tasks, it's just a big list of tasks. That's all it is. Some of them may change. I may add to it. I may take some out. I may delegate some of it if I can, you know. And then from from here, when I do my plan every week, I go through each project and I look at this list and go, okay, is there anything on this list that is deadline-based that I absolutely have to have done by a certain day this week? And if there is that is probably already generally on this page. This is the monthly view of the life mapping small projects inserts from DIY Fish. Okay, I got the personal size and I printed them at 115% to convert them closer to a, a regular uh, Midori Traveler's notebook size. Okay, if it's something that is deadline based during the month, or something that is way, way, way important must absolutely be done if it has to be either by a deadline or by a deadline that's my own. Like I, I know I have to have this done by this date for whatever reason. That goes up here. Okay. So I have boxes around days that things are due. I have things colored in here that match my calendar. Those are just for my own reference. That's days that some of the boys are gone, days that Mike is out of town, because that affects when I can get things done, right? And then I continue doing that. So first of all, I, I look at this and see, okay, this upcoming week, is there anything that is deadline-based that must absolutely be done this week that is not already done? And if there is, that goes on to the weekly page of that same DIY Fish um, LM inserts, the small project planning inserts. Okay, and if it's deadline based, I put it right up here at the top. Say by the 17th, say by Monday, I absolutely have a deadline. Something has to be done and it's not done yet. So I put the 17th right there. I leave timer duration blank. I only use anything for the times, and I do this down here as well, when it's something that's a billable thing, you know, billable to a client. And then what the thing is. Okay, and I go through each project in my, my work projects and I do that. If it's not something that's deadline based, again, I'm going to see it over here on my month view. At the beginning of the month, I did basically the same thing I do for the week. I went through each project. I went, okay, what do I absolutely need to have done this month? None of these are necessarily by a specific date, but, but they're either things that I absolutely want to get done this month, like launching that What's Your Why Not series. I really, really wanted to get that done this month. These are reviews that I said I would have done in November. So these two I definitely want to get done this month. I actually have another one to add to that now. Um, <clears throat> we're going to do that right now. See how this works, guys? Okay, so... So that is what this section of the monthly view is. So at the beginning of the month, I go through all my projects. What is time sensitive? What is not necessarily date specific, but that I absolutely want to get done this month. And I do the same for the week. So at the week, I go through my project pages real quick, update anything that maybe I missed marking off, any notes that I may have made about any email exchanges. Generally, if somebody emails and says, hey, you know, could we do this on the website or 
oh, would you mind posting this? It's, you know, I, I'm not getting the format quite right. It doesn't look right. Whatever the case may be, um, I jot those in the project section for that particular client. Okay, so I do see them. Generally, lately, they also go right on the day. So like you can see, I've got stuff marked in the margins. That's all different. You know, some of it's for me, some of it's work stuff. So I generally lately, because I've got the two pages per day now, I've got this open, I might make a mark here, but I always do put them back in here and I add them to the checklist in Evernote. So if something happens to this, you know, if I spill on it, if Liam colors all over it, you know, whatever the case may be, I have a backup. Okay. So go through everything, pick one or two things from each project, whether they're these or whether they're my own projects, things for the YouTube channel, things for the blog. And I basically just make a big list. This is all I want to get done this week. You know, and I check this. Okay, here were my objectives for the month. Here's the date sensitive stuff. Here's the stuff that I feel I need to get done this month. All right. And then I take from each one of these. Okay. So I wanted to launch What's Your Why Not? So I went into my project pages, looked at the notes that I had made here and there, kind of compiled them all together and thought, okay, this week I can get that done. So I added it onto the list for this week. That's where all of this over here comes from. These are just little kind of next steps or like, like doing this video. I just wrote the project right there. Okay. And then on the weekly page, again, this stuff is the date sensitive stuff. Here I put down the name of each project that I'm going to be working on this week. Okay. And then over here is my time. So that without having to flip to the daily page, I can look at the whole week right here with the time blocked out in a visual way rather than looking at it like, let's see, my weekly calendar tends to exist as everybody else's schedules. Okay, that's pretty much what my weekly calendar is. This, because it's a more visual way rather than me having it all written out, I can block off the time and see where I can squeak things in here and there. So here is what that ends up looking like. Okay, so if you are one who has a certain amount of time every day, like at work, let's say, you can see, okay, I have a meeting from this time to this time. You know, I have to do this report at some point that day. I've got two hours here. I can do it here. Okay, so this is really helping you manage your time. All right, and again, I will link to the very first video I did on these. It was about a year ago. And I'm using them differently than they're set up. So, but that is how I'm using them. Blue is time that is blocked off that I am driving kids, <clears throat> doing homework with them, um, whatever the case may be. Um, the little slivers of time, like the 15 minutes, half an hour, are me working on projects. And I have to be really careful not to let that depress me. Because <laughs> I've got all these big chunks of time. You know, here, here I got a lot done. But, but otherwise, these little slivers are me taking 15 to 30 minutes and working on one thing, okay? And that's how I that's how I managed to get stuff done. Little, little tiny slivers of time, which is funny. I've really had to learn how to do that because I tend to be the type of person who if I'm gonna work on something, I wanna sit down and I wanna plug away at it and I wanna work at it for a good two hour chunk of time and with no break and you know, you get into that flow and I don't get a whole lot of that anymore. It's just, it's just too busy right now. That's all there is to it. So that's what this is. Okay, so if you are planning your projects and time management is more of an issue, that's what this is fantastic for. Okay, so that is what I will be doing on this page for this upcoming week. Week 47, I will go through my work projects in here. I'll go through my personal projects, so the Evernote series, the What's Your Why Not series, um, and then I will look at my monthly anything date specific, anything I want to get done this month. And then I'll just pull one or two tasks for each of these things, make a quick list right here for this upcoming week. And then on the weekly page, any of the date specific or really super important stuff goes up here. I'll block out my times that I already know from this time to this time, you know, Monday through Friday is the school week. So certain times every day, I know that I'm driving. And then I'll put each project down here, just like I did. On this one, if they're billable hours, I put the time right in on the day. And if there's stuff for me, like pink stuff, black stuff, that all tends to be my stuff, that I just color in. Yeah, that day I worked on social media. This is the day that I finished up What's Your Why Not and launched it, that kind of thing. Okay? And then this over here is just my really quick glimpse. How, you know, how much did I work on what? 
All right, so that to me is the key. Keeping track of all of your task lists for each project, especially if you have a lot of them going, and really being aware of what your next action is going to be. Don't, to me at least, okay, this is just for me, I cannot worry about what the next step is 12 steps away. I can't worry about what, what the next you know, action is going to be eight steps down the road. I have to just focus on what is the next action for this particular project right now because I do get these little slivers of time and that's it. I don't really very often get a big bulk of time to really plug away and just start something, finish it, be done. So that's why these little slivers of time are so important to me. And that's why I really have to be diligent about making sure I know what my next step in each project is because when I have 15 minutes to grab and work on something, I don't want to spend even two minutes of that little 15 minute window trying to figure out what it is I should be doing. I want to be able to sit down and do it and be done with it and move on. Okay, so that is that is kind of the first look here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this and I'm going to take you guys through filling all of this in. Um, but I have to go pick kids up. So I'm going to pause this, go pick kids up, come back, get everybody something to do. And uh, then I will walk you guys through kind of filling this in um, because see, I haven't put it in for this week yet. So uh, I'm going to cover up some stuff back here so we can actually look at some more project pages and I'll show you filling it in. Okay. I'll be right back guys. Okay guys, I am back. <laughs> so here's what I got done. I have filled in for the upcoming week, just times that I know I will absolutely be driving, okay? Because that's kind of the biggest chunk of my time out of the house is running errands, driving people to practices and work and all that good stuff. So that's what all the blue is here. So these I tend to, let's see if I can get a little closer for a moment here. And not too bad. Let's see if I can make it focus a little better, guys. There we go. So these I count each as an hour. Let's look at a blank one, it's a little easier. So I count this as 5 a.m., 6, 7, 8, 9 a.m., 10, 11 a.m., noon, and so on, okay? So I have a full day in one box from 5 a.m. to midnight, all right? And all the blue is either running errands, driving kids to or from school, work, practice, grocery store if we need to go do that, you know, whatever the case may be. So that's all filled in. So I know because I invariably will think, oh yeah, I'll do that tomorrow morning. Well, no, you won't. Not until after eight o'clock because everybody's got to get ready for school. Sometimes my brain does that to me. So I have all of that blocked out. Okay. Now, see if we can refocus again. That would be nice. There we go. Now we're going to look at my monthly project page and say, okay, what do I need to get done this week, what absolutely has to be done this week. And I know because a week from this coming Thursday is Thanksgiving here in the States. So I know in this chunk of time here, I am going to lose some time, some work time because it's a holiday, because the kids are off school on Wednesday. And actually because they are off school on Wednesday, I'm getting a colored pencil. If I can find the one I want. And I am just going to mark off the solid blue are days that some of the boys are gone, but I'm just going to kind of mark these across really kind of sloppy. There is no school for these three days and obviously no school over the weekend, but that's a given. Okay. Put that back so it doesn't roll away. All right. So because I know that not this coming week, week 47, but week 48, I'm, I'm not going to have as, quite as much time to work. So that's going to kind of make me overload this coming week just a little bit. Um, but that's okay because I know it's coming. So I color code these. Um, I have like a color for each client project. And one, there are two things that I know I absolutely have to get done this week. They don't have a specific date, but one of them is this. I need to finish this. I'll actually hopefully probably have this done by tomorrow night, but just in case I don't, I am going to write it here. So I need to finish this. And I need to finish this. For that particular client. Okay. Um, what else did I want to do this week? I went through 
my list of my personal projects. Okay, so here's the Evernote series. Here's the What's Your Way Not series. And I had one essay, this one right here, that I really want to do for that. So I am going to put that on the list. Let's see, how are we going to intro or number those What's Your Why Not? We'll call that number one. We'll call the intro, intro, and that's the name of that essay and video. And let's see, this I want to work on this week, but I really don't have to have it done until next week, so I'm going to leave that alone. These two I've been working on. I'm going to finish that this week. I'm not going to launch the Evernote series yet because I think the first video in that series is going to be how I use Evernote for projects because it'll kind of go with this series nicely. So I'm going to leave that alone. And these three reviews are in the works because they're stuff that I'm using. So these may get done toward the end of this week, but I'm not going to write them in over here um, because that's, like I said, it's stuff I'm using. So I'm not going to dedicate a date to them yet um, because I'm still using that stuff and I don't quite have the reviews ready. So these I absolutely have to get done this week. So I'm going to go to my weekly page. Okay, that's my month, right? I've had way too much coffee, you guys. I am jittery. Okay. So, first thing on this list, here's where I'm working right here in the My Projects. I don't have anything this week that is date sensitive. If something comes up that's way super important, I'll put it up here, but that's what I saved that box for, okay? This down here is stuff I really, really want to get done this week, but none of this is absolutely has to be done by a certain day. I just want it done this week, okay? So, I'm just going to put just that client name and that's it, okay? Because in here is where I'm putting the total of billable hours for the day, all right? So I just know that I have something for that client and I can look at my monthly so I'm not rewriting it and go, oh yeah, I wanted to do that and I wanted to do that, okay? And then I have another client that I do just kind of maintenance stuff for and theirs is orange so I want to make sure I put that there okay and then I really wanted to do the very first actual installment of the what's your why not series not the intro but the actual installment and then what I'll do is the week goes on because I know that this is this is actually two separate projects but it's for one client okay so I can either go look in my project pages this is part of it, this is part of it. And then I have a whole bunch of stuff in Evernote as well. And like I said, we'll go over that. I do a shared Evernote folder if I have clients who use Evernote so we can kind of keep track. And um, so that's that's a whole separate thing. But <clears throat> I know I want this done and I wrote right here in the project pages by the end of week 47. So this I need to get done as soon as possible. And I may actually have that done before the weekend is through. So that may not necessarily even need to be on there, but we'll put it on there just in case. And let's see, what else? Let me look through. I'm not launching Evernote yet. I'm still using those. And I would really, really like to get some tech coding in this week if possible. So I'm going to put that here. Okay. And then in here for something like the What's Your Why Not series, if there's a day, like let's say I get to work on it on Monday a little bit, I'll put a little brown circle, a little brown dot in the box. Um, do I have any of those? I'll show you. Showing that I worked on it that day, but I didn't get it finished that day. It won't get colored in like here. Okay, I've got little purple dots showing what days I worked on this. It'll get colored in when it's done. All right, so if I say I get that essay written and I get the video of it done and I get it posted on Thursday, I will color in Thursday, then I'll know, okay, Thursday I did that. And then over here, I mark in what hours, you know, if I worked on it on Wednesday from 9 to 10 a.m., then I'll have those colored in to match it. Okay, and I do keep track of that time on my daily pages. Um, like I've said a million times by now, I'm sure you guys are sick of here, and I just don't want to lose any billable hours, and I really like to see where my time went because, boy, this last week especially, I had a couple of days that just flew right by me. So, so you can see on the daily pages what the time tracking looks like. Okay. All right, so the whole idea here is 
work projects are in one spot and I can flip to them. You know, some of them, you if you have to do something sequentially, if I have to do number one before I can do number two, before I can do number three, if they're tasks that are dependent upon the things that came before them, I, I write a numbered list. These are not, there's nothing here that has to be done in a specific order per se. So this we actually took care of just this last week. Okay. Same for this client. All right. And then I showed you guys real quick, but I'll show you again. So I checked through those to see what all had to be done. Okay. And then I also looked at the stuff for the blog and YouTube. Um, this is especially stuff that needs to be written. Okay. So I looked at my what's your why not list and these are all essays and videos that I want to get done. Okay. And they'll probably be an essay and a video together. So if people want to read it, they can read it. If they want to watch a video, they can watch a video. I'll try really hard to not make it seem like I'm reading. I'm not going to read straight from the essay, but this was one I definitely wanted to start the series off with. So I chose that, stuck it on the list. Um, Evernote, I'm not doing this yet because it's going to be part three of this series like I said and then that'll be the kickoff for the Evernote series okay and then the last thing not necessarily the last thing but the only thing I haven't shown you yet that I check is my pre-planning for videos is in my field note size so these are all the videos that I want to get done this month or that I have committed to doing this month okay and then as I go I kind of pick and choose each week what dates I want to get stuff done now considering how this last week has been I'm not going to preach. I don't have anything over here that has to be done by a specific day. The only time I really tend to write them in advance is something that I said I would have done by a specific day. Sometimes I do go in with pencil and fill in, yeah, Monday I'd like to get that posted, Wednesday I'd like to get that posted. But here's the list of all the videos for November. Okay, so this is all kind of pre-planning for videos and whatnot. And then the last thing I look at really quick is, let's see, that's tracking that stuff is just the running list of videos. And there is a lot of overlap between like this and this, okay? And you saw some of it here too because that's, this list here came from the running list of videos. Okay, so this is just a big basically brain dump running list of videos. I mark them off as they're done. Um, and I'll show you guys like a whole video project. I, I keep them cataloged back here so that I have a record of links. It all gets uploaded to Evernote so I don't have to go flipping through if I don't feel like it. Um, but this is also something I check when I'm putting together that monthly plan is, okay, what do I have in my list that isn't date specific for a whole month that I can maybe plug into this month? Okay, so I don't check that every single week, but I do as I come up with ideas for videos, I do throw them onto, into this little book here. Okay, and the last thing I really do, since I have all my time marked in, flipping back and forth through weeks too much, you guys, since I have at least all of the, the running time filled in, nothing date specific, these are the projects I wanna hit this week, and that all, we just know because we just looked, that all jives with what I had down for the month. So I should be pretty well on track for the month. Now, stuff like the reviews, I wanna start those. I wanna start plugging away at those so that I can get them posted, hopefully in this week, even maybe toward the tail end of next week and into the beginning of this week, okay? So stuff like that that I'm like, yeah, you know, I wanna start, I'm probably not going to get them posted this week, but you never know. You know, if Liam has a really quiet day and is kind of doing his own thing, I can get a lot done. So I am absolutely committed that I have to finish these two blue things because they're for a client. I have to get them done. And like I said, the one, hopefully by tomorrow night I'll have done. Um, if they're, they're things like I, I want to start, I want to start this review. I want to start, you know, putting that together. That's the stuff that's going to go on my weekly chart. Okay, um, daily maintenance checks that I do for clients go on here just so that I remember to do them every day. Um, let's see if I can find um, anything that is for the boys. Like, like I said before, this calendar, this tends to be everybody's schedule. You know, stuff I know I need to get done this week. It's usually, this is all usually stuff for the kids. Um, but like the one week I knew we needed to get haircuts, let's say. Wasn't sure what day we'd be able to do them, but I knew I wanted to get them in. So I wrote haircuts down there and marked them off when we got them done. That's what my weekly chart tends to be. I will put little bits and pieces from projects in here if it's something uber important that I really have to remember to do. Or if it's a project that I'm working on 
pretty far in advance and I don't want to forget, you know, I will have a project page for it, but I will throw in here, oh yeah, for that, you know, video, I may not be planning on doing this particular video for say a month, but I needed to research this particular thing about that for the video. I'll put that on here so that I do that research. I put the information on the project page. It also gets uploaded to Evernote if it's just, you know, clipping web pages or whatever. And then I mark it off so that as I review, especially as I change these books, because this is only a month long book, as I change from November, December, I go through those weekly charts and look at that and go, oh yeah, I did do that extra research for that. Cool. I don't have to do that now. And then it'll remind me to take the next timely little step. So that's what this is really handy for is, you know, little things that I have to get done during the week and I'm not sure when. The other thing it's handy for is when I'm looking at this weekly project page, like let's say the what's your why not number one. Okay, that is an essay I need to write. I already have all the research done, but let's say I didn't. Let's say I was like, yeah, you know, there was still that one little piece that I wanted to kind of look into a little more before I post that. I would put that over here as a task. Obviously doing the essay and the video for this, this is a project all by itself. It's not just a task. So this is more for tracking the time of that. I'll break those tasks down on here, what research I need to do, write the essay, um, you know, prepare the post, record the video, edit the video. Um, sometimes if I get a chunk of time, I just do it all. You know, I just kind of wing it and do it all in one shot. A lot of times, like we talked about, things get broken up into those little slivers of time. So I make sure it's on my weekly chart. The stuff that goes on there is what comes from here. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys that. I'm going to fill in the weekly chart here and I'm going to pull that from here and I will show you what that looks like. Okay, so here is the last little bit for the week. I filled in the daily calendar. Okay, and there are still things Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. I still need to double check Dakota's work schedule. Mike's uh, schedule is over here. And then here are the tasks that I pulled from... Man, I don't have it marked yet. You can tell that I pulled from the list for the week. Okay? So, like, one is finishing that rebuild. That's multiple steps. Okay? And I have all those steps back in the project page and in Evernote. So, all I do on here is just mark, okay, I worked on that on Monday. It'll get a little blue dot. I worked on it on Tuesday. It'll, okay, Wednesday it's done. I'll mark in that box. Then I know it's done. Okay? That is for a client. So, those are hours that I need to keep track of. So all of those go on. I don't like to keep it mixed in here because as the week goes on, this can become very messy just as I add in stuff for the kids and whatnot. Um, any ideas I have that I throw on there? Because I will add, like, there's an article I've been meaning to read for probably two weeks now, and I still haven't made time to read it. I need to write that on here, too. This, I just filled in work stuff right now. Oh, and I missed one. And I try to leave space in between for, you know, so I have room to add stuff. Okay, and then if let's say I work on this one on Monday, Tuesday, and I finish it on Wednesday. Well, on Monday right here, I'll have the amount of time we worked on it on Monday, the amount of time I worked on it on Tuesday, and the amount of time I worked on it on Wednesday. That gives me the total of the hours for that client for the week so that I have that kept track of. Okay, and you know, this is some work on the website. It's obviously more than one step, but again, I have all that back here. I don't need to rewrite every little step out here because just between those two, I could take up half this page and I don't want to rewrite all that. So I just have it in here. Plus as things come up, um, especially with these two, because they're long-term clients, I have a shared Evernote folder with them. So any ideas they come up with, anything like that, they will email me generally or text me and say, oh, hey, you know, could we do this? But if they saw an example of something that they liked, they can clip it into Evernote. So again, we will go over that during the project portion of the Evernote series. Um, so this is all one client. This is all one client. This is all the next what's your why not. This is tech coding. And then I still have some room to work in here. Okay, so that is pretty much it, you guys. Um, I think for the next video, um, I'm either going to take you guys through like planning a video. Um, so an example project to plan or show you a couple of different products that I have come across that are really helpful, um, especially depending on what kind of project planning you're doing. Um, if you're especially in a work environment, so you have certain times that you know you can dedicate to something, there are, are some project or some products that are a little more set up toward that time management, um, like this portion of this form. 
um, you know, others that are more, um, yeah, I kind of have to do things when I can. So I'm not sure. Why don't you guys let me know what you think? If you want me to take you through an example project, like start to finish, I will do that. Um, and maybe we'll do that either way. So you guys let me know what you think. And then the last video will definitely be Evernote. If you guys have questions, if there was anything that wasn't clear, I feel like I repeated myself 40 times about a couple of things just because I had to record this in little snippets. So I apologize for the repeating myself. Um, but you guys let me know if you have questions or comments or any of that good stuff. And I will be back later this week with the first true installment, not an introductory installment, but the first What's Your Why Not? And um, we will go from there. Okay. Thanks guys so much. Bye-bye.